Here is a short tutorial to demonstrate how to add color overlays and annotations to diagrams in Affinity Photo. You may need to do some of these processes manually for several reasons. For example, the PDF may not have closed curves, so you cannot use vector flood filling in Affinity Designer. You may also have design elements such as door swings that would make raster flood filling difficult as well. In some cases, the only remaining workflow is to manually add shapes and poly curves to outline areas in the diagram. I'll work on this floor plan PDF, but I'll actually just close it down and reopen it so I can show you the import options. When importing a PDF into any of the Affinity apps as a separate document, you will be presented with this import dialog. Normally, you would leave these options set to estimate. But PDFs can come in grayscale format, and Photo will honor this. Because we want to add color, I'll change this from Estimate to RGB or CMYK. This can also be done after the PDF has been imported, but it's easier and quicker to change it here. Also, I'll manually set the DPI to 300. A lot of linework PDFs tend to come in at 72 DPI because they don't contain any raster content. Therefore, there is no explicit DPI value to read from the file. Changing this to 300 will result in a sufficient pixel resolution for the document and ensure it is suitable for print media if it's placed into an Affinity Publisher document at a later date. I'll then click Open. Now that the PDF has been imported, I'll just draw your attention to the Layers panel. All Affinity apps will import PDFs without rasterizing or flattening to a bitmap, so you retain all the vector line work. This is worth bearing in mind because it means you can manipulate line work or other elements such as text directly in Photo, Designer or Publisher. You don't have to explicitly open a PDF in Designer for this flexibility. I'll show you this later when I hide all the text. For now, I'll select the Rectangle tool on the Tools panel here. Zoom in, then draw a rectangle over the foyer area. The shape tools default to a pure white fill and no stroke. To change the fill color, I can immediately look up here and click the fill color icon. On the color wheel, I'll change the fill to a light green. I can also change the fill opacity with this slider, which will make the line work and text underneath show through. The color model can be changed on this drop down here. So you can use another model such as RGB sliders if you wish. You can also switch to the swatches tab if you have predetermined colors you want to use as well. On the drop down, you will find various Pantone swatch sets in addition to other standard categories. As I still have the rectangle tool selected, I can draw out a second overlay over the living room area, and it will use the existing color settings, including the reduced fill opacity. I'll click up here once again, switch across to the color tab, and this time choose a mid yellow color. Now I'll show you how to create a custom poly curve shape with the pen tool over this sit out section, where a basic rectangle won't cover the desired area. I'll select the pen tool from the tools panel here then zoom in and single click to create my first node. I can now single click to create additional nodes around the boundary of this section. Holding shift throughout this process will constrain the tool to 45 degree increments so I can easily create right angled curves. Once I reach the first node, I'll click on it to close the curve. Now it's the same process as for the rectangle tool. Click the fill color icon up here, choose a color, then reduce the fill opacity. To close this dialog without having to click anywhere, I can use escape. Now I can use the pen and node tools to tackle more complex areas like this staircase here. To start with, I'll block out a basic polycurve shape. Following the stairs up, across, then back down. I'll give this polycurve a dark brown fill. Then I'll need to modify these curves. 
For this, I'll use the Node tool. I can access this by long clicking on the Pen tool, then releasing the mouse button over the Node tool. Alternatively, I can switch between the two tools using P on the keyboard. Now I'll click drag on the middle of the bottom line and drag it down. Then do the same for the top. If the polycurve shape doesn't quite fit the area, I can also single click on the nodes either side and modify the curvature handles if required. This whole process is non-destructive, so you don't have to worry about committing the edits at any point. Now, if I wanted to include this small area here, I would need to create some additional nodes. For this, I just need to single click on the existing curve and a new node will be added. I'll continue this process. Click to add a new node, then click drag to move it into place until I've covered the area. If I need to switch back to another shape or poly curve to change it, I can do this on the Layers panel, or if I switch to the Move tool with V, I can click on the Document view to select a layer. As well as changing the color up here on the Context toolbar, you can also use the Color panel located near the top right of the interface. This defaults to an RGB slider model, but you can change this by clicking on the panel options here. Fill opacity is also present, with some additional preset values available on this drop down. You can also see a more detailed swatches list. This isn't shown by default, so you can go to Window Swatches to access it. If you wish to see the names of the swatches, you can also go to the panel options and under Appearance, enable Show as List. The swatch list is also searchable. So for example, if you were looking for a particular Pantone swatch, you could type it here, and it will return that swatch. I'll click to assign it to this rectangle, then bring the fill opacity down. I'll quickly cover an annotation workflow using dashed lines, arrowheads, and some text. First, I'll switch back to the pen tool here. Then I'll click somewhere off to the left here to create the first node. And I'll then click and drag when creating the second node to make a curved line. Holding Shift will let me constrain this as well. I'll release the mouse button, then zoom in. To add a stroke, I'll go up here and click on the Stroke option. If I start dragging on the width slider, the stroke will now appear. You can also use the mouse wheel when hovering over this input box to increase and decrease the width in one point increments. Above the width slider, I can change the style to a dashed line. And I'll switch the cap type to a butt cap. Then I'll change the dash pattern down here to two, two, for a longer dash and a longer gap. Finally, I can add an arrowhead by using the start and end drop downs here. In my case, I'll add an arrowhead to the end. I'll choose a curved arrowhead, then zoom out. I'll now add some text here. For quick annotations, it's easier to use the artistic text tool located here, since this lets you quickly scale the font size intuitively by resizing the text layer. I'll click drag to determine the initial font size and release the mouse button. Then type my text. Once finished, I can then use Escape to exit out of typing and press V to switch to the Move tool. This will let me move the text around and scale it up and down, which will change the font size. I can also change the font using the drop down up here. Don't forget that it's easy to change the annotation line at any time. I can select the curve layer, switch to the node tool, and modify the nodes and curvature until I'm happy 
with the result. Finally, you might want to quickly hide and show all the text in the diagram. Affinity Designer has its Select Object functionality to achieve this, which Photo doesn't have. However, you can use Layer States to achieve the same result. I'll go to Window, States, which will make the States panel appear on the right. I'll drag this out and float it for a clearer view. At the bottom of the panel, I'll click this icon to create a new Smart State and call it Text. Expanding this new state, I'll enable Layer Type and check both Art Text and Frame Text. Now I can simply click the Hide icon and it will hide all layers of these two types. Clicking the Show button will reveal them again. You can do so much more with layer states. If you're interested, there is a dedicated video tutorial you can watch on this feature. For now though, I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.